guys, welcome to Irish Funny Vlogs. Myself, Keitinho and Kino. Do you like that, Kino? Keitinho and Kino are here today. <laughs> I didn't know. I thought that was a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for you to say we'll start that again. <laughs> we'll start that again. I think uh, the viewers might get a bit of a laugh out of that anyway, out of our stupidity. But uh, we're here to talk about Cork City today anyway. So hopefully uh, we won't get a laugh out of that, I suppose. And what did you, what do you think about the, um, I suppose, the non-takeover during the week? Because obviously Grove Moor were set to take over. Um, the last few weeks has been very quiet, and I had my concerns about that, to be fair. Obviously, you know, they wanted a, a longer lease on Turner's Cross, and the Munster Football Association, who owned Turner's Cross, basically refused that, and that's a deal dead in the water. What are your initial thoughts, anyway? Uh, first of all, I'd say I'm disappointed looking at social media at the amount of people taking pride and taking a laugh out of the fact that one of our teams is in this mess. Uh, I don't think it's right. Uh, it's a sad day for the league. I was looking, like, you're looking at Cork City and, like, what a team. What an asset to the League of Ireland. And you're looking at how bad they were last season. Now followed by this. It's, like, it's it's not great. Uh, to take over, they don't, let, let's be honest, they don't happen overnight. Uh, it takes it takes a good few months, and in fairness, it was a good few months now in the pipeline. And I expected them not to be announcing any signings. I expected nothing coming out of Cork City. I oh, sorry, I expected everything coming out of Cork City players and stuff like that. And nobody going in until this was sorted. So I didn't expect a lot of activity, which is which is rightly so. They didn't get it, uh, and then it's very quiet and. You kind of expect that because you know they're in talks and the deal was obviously very near. Like, we all knew that. It was just a matter of signing on the line because they weren't even buying the club. I think they were just taking it on. So, like, considering the fact that they didn't even buy it and they went to take it on, like, without putting their hand in their pocket for all, I think it was a euro, was it? They had the paper? It's a euro, yeah. yeah. Like... It, that speaks volumes in itself that, like, they're in a serious situation there uh, of, I'd say, a lot of debt or they're, they're in a financial difficulty big time again for, what, the third, fourth, fifth time maybe? Of course, you know, but you're looking at it and you're saying that speaks volumes. If somebody doesn't even want the club who, let's face it, has a lot more money than Cork City will ever have probably, if he doesn't want the club and he's not even paying for it, there's something wrong. So and it's a huge club if you consider in League of Ireland football, Cork City is a huge club, huge fan base. Like you I, know, would say, many- yeah. I, I personally would say Rovers, I would say be the top. I would say I would even put Bowles up there as a big club lately. Uh Cork definitely a huge club. I'd say Cork would be second, if not third in terms of the biggest clubs in Ireland. I'm not saying the most successful. I'm not saying the best team. I'm saying the biggest club. And, you know, I think, like, we could be seeing, we could be seeing the league next year without Cork City at this minute in time, unless they go 100% amateur because they're in serious trouble, as it is, like. The only good thing for them is that Forrest put through an application with the FAI for a license as a fail safe just in case this went wrong. So now lucky it's no, not true with that guess but No, I, I, I wouldn't call it lucky now. I'd call it I'd call it a problem. I'd call it something I'd, I'd call it something waiting to happen. I'd call this like I'm looking at it now and I'm thinking of money in the night. I'm thinking of Spartan Fingo, I'm thinking of Dublin City, I'm thinking of all these teams uh, Limerick who we're in serious financial trouble and they're going into a season. Mm. Like, they're not, it's not, the, the figures aren't going to add up. There's not, they're not going to get anybody in the gates for a start. Uh, I don't know how many jerseys they sold, but it won't be enough to keep a club afloat. Like, so my question would be, where are they getting the money to fill this? Like, I think it's 20 grand. It's not a lot of money in terms of Cork City, but when they haven't got it, 20 grand is a lot of money to apply yeah. for a license. 
Is yeah, that's the question. Yeah, yeah, that's the question. Have they actually paid already, though, I wonder? I'm not too sure not about that. that. But it's not only paying for it. Paying for a license is a grant, so once off payment, it's sustaining the it's team sustained throughout the, the year. Like, yeah. they're not... I, I would say they probably got a fiver out of prize money this year for competing in the league. And that's being, that's being coins. I would say they probably would have got a fiver uh, considering they finished bottom of the table. Like, and look, I think this was coming. Uh, the fo- look, we always see it. We always see the rise of teams and car coming up at Carfield and everything was great. But it's something which I, I look at and I say, yeah, looking at Cork, and it was a decline since basically since Coffee left. It was a serious decline, and it was getting it was getting to this stage. And look, unfortunately, we're in the situation now where Cork are in the fourth division. Like we would have never thought that. Yeah, and I mean, if you look at them now as well, um, obviously your Garrett Morrissey's and all these players, you know, that are at the club. Henry Oshing's probably gone back as well. They're not going to have these players next season. No. no. Amateurs, you say, they're going to be amateur. Hopefully now they're going to be amateur. That's the funny thing. That's the best they can hope for now. Um, they do have a lot of good young players in the ranks, like Alec Byrne, Dinanga, uh, Kagbra, the right back, isn't it, as well? There's a few others, Whitmarsh, uh, Jacob Bryan. You're hoping that they can keep these players on and at least focus on youth development maybe for a season and see how they push on from there. It's going to be hard for Cork because I would say Atlone have a bigger budget of Cork this year coming for the season. Uh so you're looking at your Cove Ramblers, you're looking at the players in Cove. Can they take them on? Can they give them? You know what I mean? I would fancy Cove finishing ahead of Cork City at this minute in time. So if I'm a player, I'd probably play for Cove over Cork City this year. Nobody in a million years will thought is here you saying that. But I think Cork are in a serious mess. Uh, I think the best thing to do was go amateur, play play the youth, build up the key, as much, like try and Try and make it good, <coughs> and then over a couple of seasons, try and break even on the debt. Have have a debt free. Look, Bowles done it. Bowles were literally on the brink of hours away from the club going, and Derry were the same at one stage. You know, Cork were the same. Like Cork are probably masters at it now, which is not a nice thing to say. But I was just about to say that. I mean, you would think they would have learned a few lessons here. I mean, yeah. Forrest took off. 2010 wasn't it roughly yeah. 2000. Um, and they thought look this wasn't going to happen again etc etc here we are 10 years later and this happened as you said this process started two years ago really they've gone from champions to a team that will do well to finish sixth in the first division next season yeah at this minute in time yeah at this minute in time it's it's really yeah. it's really bleak and in cork and uh, look i fear for them even getting a license i wouldn't be surprised if we see Cork City not in the league next year, it looks like Rovers Bay are going to be back in the league in any way. So, you know, will there be room for Cork City at this minute in time? Would it, would it be right for them to go in that league knowing that they're in serious financial difficulty? And that's the truth. Like, last year spoke volumes for me that they needed to sell on the Maguire and uh, O'Connor, wasn't it? Oh, Oh, the clauses for Brown and Maguire, is that what you mean? I think so, yeah. It was the clause for Brown, wasn't it? Yeah. But, like, they had to sell them on. Just to get a license this year. Now, look, you're looking at Alan Brown and, you know, Shani Maguire. They had to sell these They had to sell these clauses on just to, get a, just to get a license last year in the league. And for me, if that doesn't speak volumes itself, I don't know whatever I will. I think uh, it just shows you the job Neil Fenn done to get that squad of players on the pitch. Now, look, I think they're paying for it now, let's be honest. But it was a game. You could argue anyway, in many ways, yeah. wasn't yeah. it? I think, I think it, this was this was always going to be the case, unfortunately. We hope that the new fella will come in. Uh, look, if the new fella came in, you'd be talking about them winning the force of it. You'd be talking about them, you know what I mean? You'd be talking about them going for the cup even. But now we're talking about them hopefully finishing off the bottom, our second bottom, third bottom of the fourth division. Now, I, I look at, I see a lot of underage League of Ireland games and I know the quality of Cork City players. They have some good players coming through, so I expect them to be competitive. I expect them to be up there with the Cove Ramblers. I expect them to be up there in, in and around the top 
been around to say fourth down. I expect them to be. I wouldn't be surprised if they snuck in the playoffs, uh, considering the young talent that they have. To keep some of those young players, say, that played some Premier Division football last season. I mean, the guys that came through the youth, as I mentioned before, Alec Byrne. Yeah, yeah. Good players. Good players. Dinanga is another one as well. So if they could keep those kind of players, it does give them an opportunity. But interestingly as well, it looks like they're probably going to have to play Bishop's Town. I know Cork City fans hate playing in Bishop's Town. Oh, yeah. Look, I, I've been in Bishop's Town for a game. I've been I've been in Turner's. Look, it's a no-brainer, Turner's Cross. Is, Turner's Cross is probably up there with... It's my second favourite away game. I love Cork City. I love going to Sligo. Sligo's my favourite. Uh, brilliant. I just love I love the showgrounds. I love going over. It's not that I wouldn't be the best of the best of facilities, but it's just a nice little ground to go to. Uh, I think Cork is way ahead of the showgrounds in terms of facilities or stuff like that, which you would expect from a council ground. But I, I just always look for Cork away. I think it's a great trip. I think uh, like you used to go there and you used to you used to hope to come out there with a one nil loss or a two nil loss and not a bainting because you know that's what Cork were that's what they were known for you know Turner's Cross is always a tough place to go so you're losing that first of all and you're going down to that Bishop's place and I'm not a fan of it uh, obviously Cork won't be either but you know but if it's three, you know what I mean that's what um, I was just about to say it's theirs like let's be honest they will be back in uh, Turner's Cross like, you know, this isn't forever, like, and I, I, I do strongly believe that. The other side of it is, I know it's funny, but if they're going to be moved to Bishop's Town, it might be a bad time to do it because it's likely to be fans in anytime soon, let's be honest. So, I suppose from that point of view, you know, yeah, they don't win, really... Win. Uh, they don't the, you know, they have to pay their electricity. That's a barely. That's all. Uh, like, that's probably another thing. What's going to happen there? Who knows? But, like, this is the situation they find themselves in. Uh, but it's a better option for them at the minute. I'd be disappointed now uh, if, like, let's say, Pat's played in Bally House or something. I'd be very disappointed, but that's the truth. That's the way it is. Like, and you know, if we played up in what they call it, up in what's, what's St. Francis's ground or something, Baldonnel, you know, it's a, that's what would have probably would have been something like that if that was Pat's, let's say. And I'd be bitterly disappointed as a fan. But when you actually sit down and look at the financial cost or the financial savings that you can save out of it, who knows? Like maybe it's the best option. I think probably they done the right thing and not letting them get a longer lease. I was just about to ask you that, yeah. Because they're paying this and all of a sudden it's not sustainable. They're not to sign the contract for I don't know how many years they wanted the lease for. But yeah, let's say five to seven years or, four, or seven to ten years and they wanted that lease and they went, God forbid, they went bust next month or next year or whatever. You know what I mean? That lease is still signed up and, you know, Cork City are still, let's say, entitled to play there. So I, I would be... Them from somewhere as such. That's it. So I'd be wary of that. I think the best thing they do is go back to Bishopstown I think they're best off training there, playing there, doing everything there, and building up the key. It's going to be a long process. Look, it's not going to happen overnight. Uh, could this be like it's easy to say or tough to say, see or say it now, but could this be a little bit, a little bit of a blessing in disguise? Because we know they were in trouble regardless, weren't they? Yeah. Um, you're just mentioning the lease there, and that could have been like uh, signing a contract with the devil in many ways as well, couldn't it? I mean, yeah. maybe they need to sit back and take a look and say, we've already discussed five or six names there that have played Premier Division football, young lads, if they can keep them and bring some other young guys through and seriously look to build build again. And, um, you know, if you, in other words, if you can't challenge for the title, they put everything to try and challenge Dundalk for the Premier Division title. That's what they did, basically. And that, in fact, no, they didn't put everything. They put what they didn't have. If you yeah. can't do that, then you just can't do that, can you? If, if you're fourth or fifth in the table, it's so be it. If that's within the limits of where you can go. Yeah, and look, I think we, we've given a lot of other owners and clubs stick for, let's say, not putting their hands in their pockets. For not, you know, like I would even go as far as saying, Pat's even, or just, or the first ones that popped into my head, you know? Like, 
Garrett gets hounded every off season. This one's no different. But he gets hounded for the budget. And you know, he, he I'm I'm thinking and I'm looking and I'm saying not once have Pat's ever been in trouble with Garrett. Not once have we ever says right, there's something wrong here. You know what I mean? I think probably the Carpati League F, but that was sorted straight away. In 2011, the European game that time. That 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 was sorted. But you know, you're looking at it and you're saying Owners like that is what we need in the league. You know, like the club is never in doubt. Yeah, look, if you look at Drotted as well, and obviously yeah. Drotted have got themselves all sorts of trouble. Connor, uh, how he's come in there. And we've talked about it before, but look what they've done. They've brought your young players. They've managed yeah. to keep them, which is best for two or three seasons. They've got into the Premier Division. They've added one or two bits. If they go down, though, they're not going to be in big, big trouble. They might have to let a few players go, but they're not. The club isn't going to be ruined or anything like that. It's but it's just from exactly. Cork City's point of view, it must be so frustrating from Cork City's point of view that again and again and again, they seem to get themselves in this situation. Like you look, it's bizarre. You look, at, you look at Cork, and I'm going to push Shamrock Rovers here now. You look at Cork win the lake, and they were a force. They were they were fantastic. Well, I know they fell over the line, and that was that's the god honest truth. Uh, without uh, Maguire there, they fell over the line. Uh, they really did. I think if I was in our five six games in that league, I think Dundalk would have won it. Believe it or not. But, Maguire wasn't there for the season. I know it's all ifs and buts, but he yeah. did make a back there. Yeah, like he was. Like I think Cork. I think they only won about five games toward in the second half of the season. Like they they were crap. Uh, so. You know, if there was an extra five games in that league, who knows what could have happened? You know, that's 15 points and dog could have picked up, which you couldn't see them dropping points at that time. But it felt like it could all fall apart. Like, it felt like if they didn't win the league next year, it's like they put absolutely everything rightly so. They're at the win the league, they're the best in the country. Why not go to win it again? But it felt like it's, it's falling apart. You look at Rovers, and look, if Rovers don't win the league next year, they're not going to fall apart. They're not going to yeah. fall apart. It's the situation now. And that, that's the question as well, actually, I was thinking to myself there, is that is it worth almost, you know, going all out and spending what you don't have to win a league like Cork did? And won a cup as well to just fall yeah. apart. And we don't know how long they're going to be gone for, essentially, from yeah. the Premier League. No, because, you know, they don't really well win the cup that year and then go on and do the double. Yeah. Uh, Look, that was a great period for John Carfield, and that was a, a superb Cork City side. And it was great to see, uh, it was great to see a Cork City team like come together and play and be a real force. And Tony's Cross was packed. They're in Europe. They're getting, you know, Legia Warsaw and all them. You know, they're getting a few bob. They were in Europe two years ago, wasn't it? Last one yeah. they were in Europe, and they, 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 they fairness, they got battered. Uh, now I'm saying a Pat's got battered that year as well. But yeah. you know, they were they were in Europe and that's a lot of money coming into Europe. You know, we when you're talking a lot of money, you're talking two, two and a half, three seasons prize money if you're for winning the league uh, in one game. So it's a lot of money and look, you had the players there and the players were on big wages, there's no question about it. Like yeah, Carl Shepherds, your Greg Bulge, your Kenny Browns, you know, your Bennett, McNulty. You know, th- there was players there, Morrissey, Buckley, you know, uh, Daryl Horgan at one stage was even on the books, you know, and that's gone back now with Kilduff when he brought him back on loan that time and all. But this was the start of it with Tommy Dunn. He built it. Yeah, that's the issue as well. Like, you have to you have to sustain that success, don't you, if you're yeah. going to go that way. And it's very difficult to do that because like, they've obviously sustained the success, but they also have had better... You know, they've had actual owners, backers. Cork haven't had backers as such no. in the last few years. So. You know, it's, it's very hard to retain a league title. That's a good side. If you can retain a league title and you can stay on top, like, you know, it doesn't happen all the time. Bowers won it. Then, obviously, I know they had the financial difficulty and they went. But, you know, then you're looking slow. You go, Rovers won the double two years. Rovers won it two years in a row, sorry. He struggled a bit after that when Michael O'Neill yeah. left. Then they struggled. Then Sligo came on board. They 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 won the league for a great season. Lucas says you don't need a great team to win the league. 
You just need a couple of players that just clicks right there, right now. Especially around that time, because around that time there wasn't one team that was dominant, wasn't there not? No, it was every a patch one in. Yeah. Well, I, I look at it, right? And I, people say, will teams dominate? Like, if, like, you're looking at Shamrock Rovers now, right? They're going to dominate Irish football for five, ten years, people are saying, right? Now, but what I'm saying is, last year, Dundalk were going to dominate football for five, ten years. It's whoever wins the league. I think it's key, and nobody would have said when Dundalk won their first title, say under Kenny, that they were going to dominate Irish football for six, seven years. Yeah. But then at the time, you don't no. know how it goes. But you, you, as you mentioned, Shamrock Rovers is the way they run now. They're in a better situation, I guess. Yeah. And You know well, that kind of what way. I'm is like every year, like this year, you're looking at Dundalk and they didn't get any plaudits. Let's be honest. Uh, like they've won the cup and stuff like that, but they didn't get any plaudits. What I'm saying is this time last year, Shamrock Rovers was, let's say, Dundalk, who but they won the cup, but they didn't really get many plaudits because Dundalk were so good in the league. And you're, well, it's, you're saying about the plaudits or the Dundalk didn't get, well, isn't that a compliment in a way to them because it shows how far they've raised the bar? Yeah, yeah, but what I'm saying is, like, people say, well, after, after you just win the league, we're going to dominate now. And, you know, everybody thinks that. No, but it's true, like, you know, when Pat's won it, you know, then you look the next year, you're signing Key Fatty, you're bringing in Key Fatty into that unbelievable team. Now you're looking at, you're looking then at Dundalk and you're looking at the players they brought in, the Michael Duffy's and stuff like that, you're saying, this team can't be beat. And that's what happened with Cork as well. You're looking at Cork and you're saying, this team can't be beat. But every year someone else comes along and beats them. And that's, that's what football is all about. But, like, you're, you're looking at it and you're saying, if Rovers didn't win it next year, it's not the end of the world. They they have everything they have. I think Cork was Cork was built, built on sand at the yeah. at that time. It felt like it take, took one thing and the whole thing just wiped out, and that's what happened, unfortunately. Exactly, it felt like if they didn't win the league for four consecutive years or win a number of European games or qualify, they had to. The bar had to be too high for Cork to actually sustain what they were doing. Yeah. Ultimately, like it does, I mean, some fans, it, it is a question, like, do you want to win a league title and then disappear for 10, 10, 15 years or whatever it is? I don't, we can't tell, but you know what I mean? Is it worth it? Like, ask Shelburne, is it worth it, like, that success for what, I don't know, you could say 15 years out of 16, whatever it was in the first division? I don't know, you've good memories in that, but at the same time. <laughs> Yeah, you've good. No, you do get good memories, I suppose, from that kind of thing. But then again, you know, it's tough being the first division if you're a big club for a long, yeah. long time. It's a tough one. No, it's 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 not right. And I can't see Cork being the Premier Division for a number of seasons at the minute. But look, yeah. everything changes from year to year. Like I just says, like Dundalk team was pulled out of Kenny's arse. Let's be honest, we didn't know any players. We really didn't. And they Chris went. Jesus, you know what I mean? Well, um, we like I, I, I'd know from watching League of World, I knew the likes of Brian Garland, I knew the Andy Boyle or Shells, I knew, like, they were, they were okay players. Let's be honest, like they were, they were okay. Like, like, or Brian Garland turned like a bus for for Monaghan. He really did. Like, or, or what was that? 2012, he was at Monaghan. 2011 would have been. We played them again. Obviously, Roddy Collins was the manager. And Christy was up from Christy was dancing around Garland. Like, and, like, he was poison. And I'm looking at him signing for Dundalk then. I'm like, oh, you expected them signings because they were down there. But, like, he, like the, re, the point I'm getting to is you're looking at Cork. And they were still signing big. And they were still signing these big players. Games. Yeah. Even though, like, they were way off the pace. Like, they were, let's say, where Pats are now, let's say, in a bit of a limbo between 12th and 4th. Let's be like, you know. Yeah, I know, yeah. That's the way Cork were at that situation. And you're know, saying they were they were trying to close the gap, but they were trying to do it too quick, too soon. They were, and look, it's a shame, but that's, that's where they are now. 
Nah, it's very disappointing. Guys, let us know what you think in the comments. Like the video, subscribe if you're new, and hit your bell notification button so you don't miss a video. Cheers, Keen. That was good. Thanks a minute. Thanks.